Oh, oh hey. Uh, I'm gonna teach you something you probably don't know about. What's up everybody, it's AlexRam1313 and today we're going to talk about AutoWit scripting. Now if you've never worked with AutoWit before, don't worry, it's a lot like Rubies on Rails or Visual Basic, plus it compiles into a small exe, just like C. Please note that AutoWit is not an object oriented language, so the dot operator is non-existent. So first you want to go to AutoWit.com and download the program. Once you download the SDK, you want to create a new folder to stay organized, right click new, and then AutoWit V3 script. And name it whatever you want. I named it sup.au3 because it's much cooler than hello world. Now right click the file then click edit script. Here's the IDE. It's called site. Now just remove all the comments. I'd like to take this time to say that there's no console to print something. If you want to output something to the screen, use a message box or simply generate the GUI and set the data of a control. If you don't create a graphical user interface, and since there's no console, if you use a wild true loop, then the program is gonna run in the background until you tell it to close. Let's get coding. We're gonna start off by printing sufu to a message box. So let's do that. MSG box, parentheses, zero, we'll get into that later. Comma, the title, and the text, sup foo, and then end the line. You may have noticed we didn't end the line with a semicolon, because in Ottawit, a semicolon indicates a comment. You also may have noticed that there's no set structure for this code file. It's not even a class. We don't even need to define a function in this simple program. Later on we will, but for now we don't have to. Now let's test the program by pushing F5 on your keyboard, and there it is, sup foo. What's awesome about AutoWit is that it comes with very useful help documentation. You find a list of all the possible functions that come with the SDK. We can even find out what that zero meant in the MSG box function. Just search it and we'll find it. We're given a list of what's called flags or like modifier arguments. I don't know how to describe them. Just play around with them. We're also given to return values for if statements. We'll do that right now. Remember, functions are supposed to return something. So in this case, when we click yes, it'll return a value of six. To put into the if statement, we'll define a variable and set it equal to the return value of MSG box and with our parameters. It's just to clean up our code a bit. And what's cool about AutoWit variables is that you don't have to define a data type. If statements are exactly how they are in Visual Basic. When getting, setting, or defining a variable, you always want to keep that dollar sign in front of the name. And when the user clicks yes on the message box, we want our program to do the following. And that's it. Those are the basics of AutoWit. Well, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. Please subscribe. I'm AlexRam1313. Peace out.